mean everything to me because I know you mean everything to Christ. And Christ means everything to me. And I called on the Lord. I said, yeah. the Father, this is real. Will you watch over me? Will you raise him up to be strong? I don't, I, I'm just a man with flesh. This is what you call for in your scriptures. You said they wore studs and fringes, they got it on. You said they are follow the law, they doing it. You said under your house shine, they ought to love one another. And they doing it. And no man shall bind you. 
and don't match your value, like I said, they still find ways to put us in captivity. They never let up slavery. They never let up slavery. No man shall bias. Though the scripture said we were sold, when it says no man shall bias, that means we would never be free. Until this day in this country, we are not free. We gotta beg for jobs. We gotta have, we gotta change our ways to remain on the jobs. You gotta cut your hair. You gotta wear that suit. Put that tie, button that shirt. You gotta change your ways just to remain here. We gotta go to work for 16 hours just to, to make not enough money. Meanwhile, oppressor walks around the cities that we built on vacation, enjoying the cities that we built. Yes, sir. Got the ball on that? Yes, sir. Read it from the top. Man. Book of Man. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I speak unto thee. Again. Once again, again, if you recognize anything out of that scripture being brought into bondage again, again with ships, you know that you are one of these 12 tribes on this board. Blacks, Latino, Native Americans, you got to know who we are. We are God's chosen people. And once you find out, you realize that, the next thing you got to wonder, okay, I know who I am, but well, what do I do now? What you do now is, we got to get come back to the Lord. And how you do that? And do it correctly. You come get you a fly. Come and, come and get a class. Get on now, get a class. And find out how we're supposed to worship the Lord. From the men of the Lord. And the eyes should be king. Drop that. Give me the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. And the Lord, the Lord has said, matter of fact, give me, say this, give me 20, give me uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 48. And the Lord, being that we was bought in bondage, you know, we know when back in the back in the day when your parents put you on punishment, they gave you, they gave you a whooping. They would have go make make you go outside, get a switch. You know what I'm saying? They would pick up, go, go get me that shoe. They would pick up an extension cord, frying pan. You know how I punished, did it? Well, the Lord is, is more vicious than anything you can think of. He is a black man. Put up, picked up a vicious weapon to come punish his children. And that weapon is the white man. And it's here in the Bible. The Lord said he will bring a people that will be the weapon to punish us. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Twelve, baby, twelve. And he twelve. shall put a yoke twelve. of iron twelve. upon thy neck, twelve. until twelve. he have twelve. destroyed thee. Twelve. Yes, sir. The Lord shall bring Say a twelve. nation Say against twelve, thee from far from the end of the earth, as swift as an eagle, twice, and that the Lord has bring from afar a people as swift as an eagle. Anybody know what the significance of him saying as swift as an eagle? Because this is pointing out the people that the Lord brought to punish us. What's the what's the what's the uh what's the uh the mascot of America? A bald eagle. Yes, sir. If you go back before that. In Rome, Rome's mascot was an eagle. If you go back to Greece before that, the mascot was an eagle. Since all the time, our oppressor's mascot has been an eagle. Let alone, an eagle is the main animal that's in the mountains where our oppressor is from. Our oppressor is a caveman from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. And that's the main animal you will see up there in the mountains. It's an eagle. And that's been their mascot through all the time. The Bible's describing our oppressor. The Lord said here, bring a people from far away. As swift as the eagle. Go ahead. Go on. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. You should not understand. A nation whose tongue we didn't understand. English is not our native tongue. Our native tongue is Hebrew. You walk and tell you how are you how That's our native tongue. And we did not speak Spanish. 
Latino brothers. We didn't speak Spanish or English. That was forced on us by these people that God brought as swift as an eagle from far away in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's not our language. Go ahead. A nation of fierce continents. A nation of fierce continents. You know, you know what, today, they didn't conquer so much today, they don't even give us evil looks no more. They give you that half a smile, that little crack of a smile when they pass by. Why? That, that little creepy little smile that all press gives us when they walk past. You know, you gotta know we know what that is. Y'all smile like the Grinch. That little crooked little smile y'all give blacks and Latinos when y'all walk by, we know you're not our friend. We don't like that smile. That is the creepiest thing to me. That is a horror movie scene when a white person walk past me and they give me that little fake smile. We know you're the devil that the Bible speaks of. We know you put the drugs in our neighborhood. We know you got our women out here thinking it's their body and choice to kill our babies. We know what you're doing. You're not fooling us. We know that's a fierce countenance. Of course you're going to smile at your servants. We already served you. You already conquered us. We know what that smile is about. Bringing a, a, a God brought a people of a fierce countenance with a, a tongue that we did not understand. How wicked is that? You take a people's language away, and then today, they say Hebrew is a lost language. Why? Because you beat it out of us. You wicked self beat it out of us. You force us to speak your language. Keep going. A nation of fierce country which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shoot favor to the young. And they don't give a damn if you dug it home. Our person doesn't give a damn. That put, the, our, the, the, the same people that's supposed to protect us will slam an 80, 90 year old woman down in the ground. And kill a young boy like Trayvon Martin. No and kill a young 15 year old. No and go to the grocery store and gun down 10 elderly people in Buffalo. No remorse. No and gun down senior, senior citizens wherever they is. And forget about it. Forget about it. When it comes to us young on the corner, they look at us, we could be 12 years old. They treat you like a grown man. Slam you down on the ground. Throw you in jail for life and you ain't even do that. Our oppressor is a wicked devil like the Bible speaks of. Right. But he was just supposed to be our punishment. He's supposed to be our punishment. But you know what? Just like just like that, that, that uh, switch, just like that extension cord, that belt, that your parents used to beat you in? What did they do with it when they was finished? They threw it away. They threw it away. Right. And uh, the, the God of the Bible is going to one day get rid of our own person because their only use is to punish us. It says it in the Bible. Keep going. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. Drop that. Give me book of uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. You know what I'm saying? Hey, when, when we realize who this devil is and stop following his ways, I will have no problem. The reason why we're on the bottom today is because we're not doing what the Lord said to do and we're following the white man. We're using his drug. You see what I'm saying? Everything that he does, we in his alternative lifestyle. LGBT too. That's not our culture, black man, Latino man, Native American man. Not That's not our culture. We the last ones who even started to get, why you, where you think the word down low comes from? In that Christian church, they had the word down low because we never accepted that. So you had to hide what you were doing. You got that? Go ahead. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you. Don't let no man deceive you. You don't need to be in that Muslim mosque doing that Islam. What? Let no man deceive you. In that Christian church where they tell you to love everybody. Meanwhile, they don't. They get making sure they get justice where we don't get no justice. They look at slavery and say, oh, it's in the past. You should forget about it. It's in the past. Critical race theory. Because they don't want their kids. 
to be embarrassed of what their forefathers have done and what their fathers and mothers have maintained throughout today. It's a reason why we're still in the same situation today. Because the same old pussies from back then, they're still here today. And they do the same things to us. You mean to tell me? They run the world, they run this country. If they didn't want us to be oppressed, they could stop it. But nothing stopped. So you can tell that these same old pussies are the same as their forefathers. Go ahead. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a following the wife first. It says that day shall not come. Well, we're going to find out what day this is. Go up to verse 1 real quick. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, this is the day that it's talking about. The day, the, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Drop back down to three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. That day of Jesus Christ coming shall not come. Go ahead. Except, except this was has to happen for Christ to come. There come a following away first. There'll be a falling away from LGBTQ. There'll be a following away first. Brother, my body, my choice, all that baby, my body, my choice has to be a falling away from there. Go ahead. There come a following away first. Selling and using the white man's drug of falling away first. Falling away first. Seeing, seeing that oppressor as being a righteous man, we have to fall away from. You see what I'm saying? We got to fall away from all these things. Fall away from his holidays when we celebrating pagan gods. We need to fall away from everything that they do. We need to fall away from his religions. That Islam, that Christianity, that Buddhism, all these oppressors, their, their gods can't do nothing for us, black man, Latino man, Native American man. We need to realize that their, our king will come back as soon as we fall away from all these things. You want the solution? That's the solution right there. We need to come back to what God says stop to stop doing. What, what to do? Love your brother. Stop eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. These things will put us on top like the Lord's supposed to have us do. You see what I'm saying? Give me the book of Deuteronomy 7 and 6. If you don't believe me that the Lord said that we're supposed to be on top, and all we have to do is fall away from these particular things, I'm going to read it right here in the Bible. The scripture said that we need, to, we need to fall away and we need to realize who that man of perdition is. That man of sin. You know who that is? You know who that is? Every time you go in your Google machine or you see a picture of so-called Christ, so-called Christ, this is not Jesus Christ. This is the devil that the Bible speaks of. His name is Caesar Borgia. This is a real person. And he was named a Caesar Borgia. He was the son of Pope Alexander VI. And he, he, he paid Leonardo da Vinci to paint his son. You know what I'm saying? Pope Alexander VI had him paint his son to be Jesus Christ. In the so-called Renaissance where they whitewashed everything. That's why when you look at this, you think this is Christ. This is not Christ. That's why you think of the Jews, you think they white. The Jews are not white. That's the Jewish man who's a convert. He was, you got to be born a Jew. If you're not black, Latino, or Native American, you ain't no Jew. And in the Renaissance, which means rebirth, the rebirth of white ideology, they whitewashed everything that meant something. They say color don't matter in the Bible. Well, why does Jesus look like this? Right. When in the Bible, Jesus is a black man. They said he had skin of brass as if burnt in a furnace. If you take the color brass, which is brown, and burn it in the furnace, you can get a dark-skinned man. Well, how the hell did we get that? Right. How the hell did we get a white Christ? Color man. Because if you knew that your, skin, your, 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 uh, your king was a black man, you may treat everything different that you do. You may treat yourself 
May you treat yourself better, treat each other better. The decisions you make, you might treat yourself like a king, like, like a, a, a true princess, like a true prince. Yeah. Babylon is falling